Now, the last couple of days have been extremely jittery. We've been getting a lot of commentary, maybe in terms of developed markets or even on the other side, as far as the China macro data point is a concern. What's the cue that you're picking up and how are you analyzing all this commentary in terms of an outlook when we talk about the emerging market space? Well, I think the nature of the sell-off has changed uh, quite significantly. Um, when it first began in May last year, it was originally a, uh, a largely technical sell-off on the back of some, some very big positioning that had been accumulated in the market um, in the first four months of 2013. Then the focus shifted to a small number of fundamental uh, stories within emerging markets. And most of those countries, uh, including India, have since taken remedial action. And it's now clear that none of them are really going to have any significant crisis. The last leg of the, of the sell-off that we've observed uh, so far in the beginning of 2014 is actually U.S.-led. Um, the overwhelming consensus going into 2014 was that the outlook for the United States was going to be an extraordinarily strong one with tapering, stronger growth, and as, and as a result of that, um, a stronger dollar. Um, in fact, most of that bullishness was priced into the uh, U.S. markets well before 2014 began. And what we've seen so far this year is actually that the U.S. has disappointed not just in terms of the data, but also in terms of the performance of its markets. So we've had a series of really quite disappointing economic data uh, over the last few weeks. And of course, the U.S. stock market has uh, taken a significant uh, tumble uh, at the beginning of this year. And that's really uh, beginning to sort of percolate into global markets uh, as part of sort of a broader uh, negative risk sentiment led by the United States. So the, the, the nature of the sell-off here is really changing quite significantly and becoming much more U.S. focused than EM focused. When you're looking at the latest data releases out of EM and the latest policy responses out of EM, that actually ought to give quite a lot of confidence for people uh, looking at the EM universe today. And of course, to the extent that emerging market asset prices are taking a beating because of what is happening in the United States, while their fundamentals are actually improving, we are clearly here looking at a major buying opportunity for emerging market assets. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's the important point there when we talk about the kind of concerns emanating from the U.S. markets. I mean, you saw that recent crack in terms of the way the markets actually collapsed as well. But the interesting part is now that we're in February, you think there's a certain concern coming in regarding the debt ceiling as well? Because that's really been the key highlight to watch out for in terms of the U.S. markets when we talk about the month of February. I mean, 7th is the formal deadline, so, so to say, but it looks like it will get extended to, till the end of February. What, what are your thoughts in terms of the debt ceiling? Well, um, to the extent that the, that the market is, has become overlong U.S. stocks, uh, and to the extent that you need a driver to unwind some of that technical imbalance that's crept into positioning in the U.S. stock market, a story such as the debt ceiling issue is clearly a negative story that you can use to beat the stock markets on the head. Uh, however, I don't personally think that that's uh, necessarily what's really the underlying reason here. I think the underlying reason for the sell-off is actually more fundamental uh, firstly, I think people got far, far too bullish about the growth outlook for the United States. Uh, we must remember that the United States is still laboring under nearly 400 percent debt to GDP ratio. And I think the second factor is, of course, that um, that uh, QE is now being unwound. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation that QE has somehow fueled uh, speculative bubbles in emerging markets, but this is simply not true. Emerging market asset prices are trading way, way, way lower than they did before QE uh, came in. The real uh, beneficiary of QE flows has been the U.S. stock market. And it is therefore no coincidence, in my view, that the commencement of tapering by the Fed has also coincided with a decline in the U.S. stock market. So I think the debt ceiling issue is... is um, is, is an eye catcher, but I think what's going on here is actually that the U.S. markets in general have been inflated by easy money. And to the extent that this easy money is now being scaled back, then, of course, U.S. markets are going to take a beating on the back of that. 
So, Jan, yeah, what's the broader outlook when we talk about the emerging markets in this kind of a situation? And when I when I ask you about the emerging markets, specifically on India, how are you positioned right now? Well, our positioning is is not really something I'm particularly prepared to talk about because it wouldn't be fair on our clients whose uh, positions, you know, are, are are their business, not everybody else's. But uh, in general, I would say that um, going into 2014, we're really looking at three major differences from last year. First of all, and this applies certainly to India, uh, the fundamental outlook is significantly better than it was at the beginning of last year. Secondly, the technical position is far stronger. A lot of fast money, a lot of retail money, a lot of bank positioning has left the market. And hedge funds that used to be long EM are probably now short. And that means that uh, the technical position is much, much stronger. The technical position will not turn global market sentiment. But what it means is that when that market sentiment does turn, then everybody is underweight and they will have to buy. And finally, uh, the major difference, of course, from last year is that after some 10, 11 months of sell-off, valuations are now very, very different uh, in emerging markets in general than they were a year ago, much more attractive. So the, the broad backdrop for emerging markets is that a lot of value has been created here. We're waiting for a trigger for the market sentiment to turn around. That's usually not going to be a single event. It's usually going to be a, a number of different factors that have to line up, not just valuations, not just technicals, not just fundamentals. We also have to see that uh, some of the vulnerable EM countries are dealing with their problems. I think we're beginning to see that. And then finally, we have to see that the alternatives to emerging markets, such as the U.S. markets, are turning out to be not quite as exciting as the market uh, had been uh, anticipating. And I think all of these factors are beginning to line up now, which suggests that we are not that far away from a turnaround in the general sentiment. As for India specifically, uh, I think the outlook is very good. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we have to get through the elections, uh, likely in May, I understand. Uh, but beyond that, we really think there's, there's quite a lot of reason for optimism. India's economy has clearly bottomed out, uh, and it's likely to pick up uh, growth this year. So, uh, so the outlook remains pretty strong.